Good evening. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Pastor Rod coming to you from Word of Faith Family Church in wonderful Wilmer, Minnesota. Uh, glad you're with us, uh, whatever time of day you're watching. Uh, we record these Wednesday evening before our Wednesday evening service, but uh, uh, just thankful that we have this opportunity just to chat a little bit about the good things of God. We've been talking about healing the last uh, few Wednesday nights. We're going to pick that up again. And I believe it's important. I think it was last week we said, you know, the best time to hear about healing is when you're well. Uh, so many times in every area of the, the Word of God, it seems like so many believers, you know, something happens to them and then they get into the Word. Where if we stay in the Word, be full of the Word in every, you know, subject matter that pertains to our life, then things, you know, may come up against us, but we know exactly how to attack it by the Word of God. You know, Revelation chapter 3.11 tells us that we're to hold fast to what you have so that no one may rob you, it says in the, the Amplified Bible. And in John 10.10, Amplified has said, The thief com cometh only to steal, kill, and destroy. Uh, Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. He didn't give us a life to, uh, you know, or a lot of people think that God tries to teach them a lesson by putting sickness on them. There's nowhere in the Bible that you can see that that is true. Uh, the thief cometh to steal, kill, and destroy. 1 Thessalonians 5.21 tells us that we're to hold fast to that which is good. And in the light of what we've been teaching, healing is good. Health is good. Wholeness is good. So we have to hold fast to it. Don't let it go. Hold fast and tight to healing with the hand of faith. Many times people will go to meetings where there's a well-known healing preacher, anointed by God. They get healed they, and praise God for that healing. But within six months, sometimes uh, not only you know what was on them came back on them, but it came on them even worse that time around because they, they were healed supernaturally. The power of God was manifest to heal, but they didn't do anything with their faith. And that's the only way we can hold on to those things that God has provided for us through the Lord Jesus Christ and the covenant that we have with him is by faith we hold on to those things that, that God has given to us. And, and um, you gotta, you got to put your faith to work. You know, once you're healed, get into the Bible, get into the Word of God and feed on God's Word. Get full and stay full of faith. Refuse to be moved. Hold fast to your healing with the hand of faith. And really the hand of faith is, 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 is us speaking it, you know, uh, speaking the word of God uh, over our lives constantly. You know, I, I like to say it this way, the devil can't make symptoms stick because God's word in me drives them out. The devil cannot make symptoms stick because the word of God in me drives them out. And, and we've said this many, many times, F.F. F. Bosworth said, faith begins where the will of God is known. Uh, Third John chapter, Third John 2, excuse me. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. That right there is the will of God. That we're to prosper in every area of life, including our health. Your faith will never operate beyond your knowledge of God's will. Most people believe that God is a miracle working God. And I mean, he's got the power, uh, you know, to, to work miracles. But they don't know that it is also the will of God. He desires healing, health, and wholeness in, in everybody's body. We need to feed on the word of God and establish the truth in our hearts that healing is God's will. And don't waver. Don't waver. 1 John chapter 5, excuse me, excuse me, la, la, la. <laughs> James chapter 1, verse 5. James chapter 1, verse 5. I'm going to read a few verses here out of James. <clears throat> chapter 1, verse 5. It says, If any of you lacks or is deficient in wisdom, let him ask of the giving God who gives to everyone liberally and ungrudgingly without reproaching or fault finding, and it will be given him. Only it must be in faith that he asks. In other words, you got to know what the will of God is before you ask. 
with no wavering, no hesitating, no doubting. For the one who wavers, hesitate, doubts, is like a billowing surge out at sea that is blown hither and thither and tossed by the wind. For truly, let not, let not such a person imagine that he'll receive anything he asks for of the Lord. For being as he is a man of two minds, hesitating, dubious, irresolute, he is unstable, unreliable, excuse me, and uncertain about everything he thinks and feels and decides. Now, bless God, we need to know what the will of God is. So when we ask, we know that he will answer what we pray for. A lot of people just hope and pray. You don't hope and pray. You believe God and what you're saying. Believe that your words are lining up, lining up with God's words. If you doubt what the word says, you won't receive anything from the Lord. You could say the person who doubts possibly wouldn't receive healing. I think ministries oftentimes, I've heard Brother Kenneth Hagin say this. He said, I think ministries pray for people in healing lines too quickly because we know, we know if they're, before we know if they're ready to stand in faith. You know, and the more people, the more that people are prayed for without results, the less they expect to receive the next time that someone prays for them. So he, he actually dedicated every single weekday at Rama Bible Training Center on campus. He had healing school every Monday through Friday, teaching people not just how to get healed, but also putting in the believer the, the, the um, ability and the faith to go out and administer healing to others. See, that's how important faith is for healing. Is I mean, every single weekday, they, they have healing school. You know, and, and oftentimes, you know, he'd tell people, you know, I'm not going to pray for you if you can be here for the next several days, uh, and then I'll pray for you. But, of course, if you're just here for a day or two, we'll pray for you and we'll agree with you. But the best way... To receive your healing is by your faith, not just some miracle. Thank God for miracles. But when it's your faith that obtains it, it it's easier for you to keep it. Amen. Uh, we'd be better preaching more on healing. We're talking to preachers now. To get people's faith built up. Before, now listen to this, before we religiously lay hands on people, because that is what we do. Jesus' main ministry was to teach, preach, and heal. He didn't just go into a city all the time. There was instances where there were things that were instantly done, miraculously. But Jesus' main ministry, main focal point in his ministry, was to teach people to develop their faith for anything they would have need of in their life. So I want to pattern my life, I want to pattern my ministry after Jesus. I want to get built up enough in my heart and mind and, 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 and so that, you know, if the symptom comes, that the Word of God will drive that symptom out. And we should endeavor to do that with, with everybody that we um, have an opportunity to minister to. You know, preachers, we need to quit trying to make ourselves look good and powerful. <laughs> Amen. What do I mean by that? Man, I've seen, I've seen, I've been, I've been a witness to this. Where preachers, they'll, they'll, they'll try to push people over to make it look like the power of God is a manifestation. Well, that ain't the power of God in manifestation. Besides that, it's not about us. It's not about how we look. It's not about, you know, someone come up for prayer and it doesn't appear that anything happened in their lives. So, you know, we don't want to look like a failure. Well, we're not failing. We don't know what's happened in that person's heart and, and mind. Amen. They, they could receive the second that we prayed for them, but the, we don't, we're not to look at the things that, 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 that appear before our eyes. We're to look at the heart. We need to believe that when we lay hands on people, when we pray for people, that the beginning of a manifestation is an operation. And whatever it takes for that person to, to receive, if they need their faith developed a little bit more, you know, praise God, just, just, just help them be determined not to let go of their faith, not to let go of their healing. 
A lot of times people will even say, man, you know, did you feel that power? And they say, yeah, I felt the power of God go in me. You know, and they walk away and, and, and you know, before they leave the building or shortly after they leave the building, you know, some little symptom will hit their body and they go, oh, I must not have been healed. And other people, it, it appears that nothing happened. And the next day they come to the service and they're completely healed and whole. Faith is where we need to concentrate on getting into people's hearts. Not just putting on a show, but getting faith. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen. We're not to use people for a dog and pony show. No, bless God. We're to, we're to minister to people. We're to encourage people. And you know what? The bottom line is this. If, if what we do or what we say attracts attention to us, we're stealing God's glory. And that is something that God will not share. Amen. Don't make, talking to my ministry friends here, don't make the ministry about what we look like. No, we're to give glory to God. We can't heal anybody. But the power of God manifested through us and faith being developed into somebody that they can receive it, that, that, that's, where, that's where healing occurs. So praise God for the word. Praise God for the Holy Spirit power. Amen. And praise God for the opportunity to be used by God, to be a vessel, to bring hope, to bring healing, his healing power, to those that are sick. I just wanted to remind you that uh, we have our Sunday morning services here at 3010 7th Avenue Northwest in wonderful Wilmer, Minnesota. If you're in the area, 10 o'clock, uh, live stream, every, service, every Sunday morning service is live stream. Uh, we, don't, we don't join the live stream until about 10.30 in our service. But we'd certainly love to have you be a part of that. And also on Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock in our building, we've got, we've got ministry for all parts of the family except for nursery. But we do have a cry room or we have uh, television piped down into the nursery uh, if you've got uh, you know, a, a, chi a baby and um, you know, you, you'd, you'd like to come to church. Hey, Come on up. If there's a little disturbance, come down and, and uh, watch on television. And, and um, we just love to have you with us. Well, Father, I thank you for this opportunity that we've had this evening. Father, I pray for those that are hearing from the Word of God this evening. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for ministering to us. There is no distance in the Spirit. So we thank you for your manifested power. We thank you for the manifested power of the Word of God where faith is developed by hearing and hearing and hearing by the Word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, and until uh, next time, we'll see you again.